Hi, this is Will Stewart from OnlineChessLessons.net, and today I'm going to be presenting a game from 1994 at Linares, a crushing victory by uh, by Anatoly Karpov over Vasilin Topalov, and Karpov at the time um, was was just killing this tournament. He had 11 out of 13 points total, and maybe considered one of the strongest tournament, uh, you know, overall tournament ever played. So, um, you know, we're going to start off. Topalov is a, a very dangerous player and very tactical, and uh, I, I've seen a, quite a few games where he's played the Benoni, so no surprise he's trying to take things there. Um, but one of the reasons why I'm going through this video, I know it's about 16, 17 years old, because Linares, uh, I just found out it's been canceled um, its cancellation, I guess, has been confirmed for this year, and so you know, I wanted to make a make a video, kind of a little tribute to Linares, and hopefully, it'll be back next year. So, pretty pretty standard opening play, and now it starts getting a little interesting. So, black is somewhat. Um, it kind of seems reminiscent of, of some types of Sicilians because uh, you just accept that white hasn't moved that, that e2 pawn up. And so, uh, I, you know, it kind of looks like black is maybe angling to play a, uh, a hedgehog here or something along those lines. Possible plans, maybe a6, b5. And if he gets in d5, he'll, he'll have a good game. It'll be freed up, definitely at least equal. And white's plan, on the other hand, he's got a great bishop on this diagonal. And um, with a move e3, so now he's attacking the knight. E e5 is not going to trap it. So maybe g6. I, I would have definitely considered g6 here. And um, I'm not exactly sure, you know, just to look at it. Possibly just bishop h6. But anyway, so Topolov chose to take, take the bishop. And these doubled pawns, while, you know, doubled pawns in general are not as strong as uh, I guess undoubled pawns because they can't it's a little tougher for them to support each other in this position the double pawns you know the the central files are open for white so he's gonna have some good play there for his rooks and uh, also this pawn on f4 is exerting some some influence on the center on e5 so the double pawns here are not not really a strength or a weakness you could say and now queen b8 by Topolov so it's a little strange uh, maybe maybe seems strange at first but the idea is uh, queen c7 would be nice and maybe I would have preferred a6 and then queen c7 with the idea of b5 coming but the idea it makes sense with queen b8 because now it's gonna support the b5 advance as well but it, the the downside is that now the rooks aren't gonna be connected for black and so now here we're, we're starting to see the game shape up. Black is going to play for a6 and b5 most likely and try to f open up the position because he's got these two bishops. And uh, this, this dark square, you know, g6 is a good move because he wants to play, put the bishop maybe on g7 if, if he can. Um, Black's problem would, would, you know, typically I guess be the, the d6 pawn. Just looking at the position, you know, what, what is white going to try to attack? But Karpov chose uh, h2, h4 because... Well, black just played g6. He's going to try to soften up those kingside pawns. And a6, h5. And now it's kind of like both players have gotten pretty much what they wanted. Black has freed this up with b5. White has uh, softened up this kingside a little bit for black. And now, now the tactics begin. So knight c5. Um, you know, here, I mean, maybe, maybe let's say if bishop e8... Um, just the simple I, i'm assuming takes takes and maybe the knight just goes to e4 um possibly you know we're gonna see a little a little tactics here maybe maybe he was even planning something else uh, bishop e8 yeah it seems okay um but not not the move you want to make is black especially if you're trying to get some activity uh it just um hmm. i mean maybe there's even maybe maybe you know some ideas of sacking the Second, the knight here, um, definitely, definitely possible. This knight coming in to participate as well. So, back to the game. So Polov takes, takes, and now it looks like Black is going to lose a piece here because this knight is being attacked twice. So 
you know, it looks like the knight's going to have to move, and then this bishop is going to hang on e7. But actually, there's black kind of just <coughs> barely manages to hold on to things. And with rook c8, so here, Karpov went crazy and, and took on e6. Just to look at the, the main idea of Topolov, if bishop takes c6, then uh, it, it looks like white just wins a piece because this is hanging too but rook a7 actually holds it all together for black and he's doing okay here uh looks like he's going to be losing a pawn after so you know white's going to move move the queen probably so queen here rook takes pawn takes b5 and and yeah it looks like he's going to lose a pawn uh i'd have to say looks maybe kind of drawish as black has that bishop against uh, white's knight but he's up a pawn. I, I don't know. It's going to be kind of tough to win also, being up this A pawn. So Karpov saw a, a better continuation. He sacks the rook here. Well, it's not entirely sacking a rook because this knight is still going to be hanging. And it's uh, it's going to... Wax King is, is not, not feeling too safe. And so rook, rook A7 by Topolov, a uh, solid move. And now rook takes. So... Karpov, um, essentially, he sacks an exchange here, but he gets two pawns in compensation. And also, you've got a note. Okay, so he's, he's down in exchange, uh, but he's got two pawns in compensation. So points were even, but this, this kind of material balance or imbalance, you could say, usually tends to favor the, the side with the piece and two pawns. And this is no exception. And especially, you've got to notice, opposite colored bishops for both sides. And this always favors the attacking side because there's nothing to, there's nothing to oppose white's bishop and attack, attacking the light squares. And so here we see a couple of uh, a couple normal moves. Black is trying to consolidate his position, bring this bishop to, to defend his king, and also open up this rook and defend laterally. And so if he can get this queen into the game, um, you know, maybe if he could just jump the queen over here somehow, maybe he can hold this game. It's going to be very tough for black to win, even though he has the exchange because of white's, you know, central domination. But maybe, maybe he can hold it to a draw or at least make it a lot more difficult for white to win. So bishop d4 makes sense. He had to move the bishop, and, and this is a good square controlling some, um, definitely controlling some squares in the center. And now pawn takes. And now... Again, I mean, this is uh, White's got all these pieces in the center, completely dominating the game, and it's very tough for Black to, to recover. So Rook D1, Karpov gets his very last piece into the game, and it's um, not immediately evident why. You know, why Rook D1? Why not Rook E1? You know, this, this Rook is on this file, this Bishop's closing it. Well, we're going to see in just a second that, uh, you know, maybe, maybe this Rook, you know, possibly... Instead of rook d1, I mean, maybe an idea that I just, when I looked at the position, um, let's see, going back here. Instead, instead of rook d1, possibly king g2, with the idea of swinging the rook into the h file, possibly a little bit too slow. And maybe king g2 simply, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's not looking so great after rook c7. So position, even though there's not a ton of material on the board, is still very complicated. And a move like f5, looking to, to weaken it up, um, this, it just doesn't seem to quite cut it. I mean, maybe just rook c7 again, and maybe black is going to win here. So rook d1 was definitely a, a pretty neat idea by Karpov. Queen takes pawn, uh, makes sense. You know, it's just, just get rid of that pawn up there. It's so advanced. And maybe he's thinking about invading to e2 which would definitely help activate the black queen. Maybe, you know, swinging the queen around, possibly to attack even. Just, just a sample idea. But queen takes a6. Topolov was uh, evidently a little shook up by what was going on in the game, and Karpov just kills it right here. He plays rook takes. So now he's going to be down two exchanges, but he's got a few pawns for it. And most importantly, his pieces are, very, are working extremely well together. Coordination is just excellent. And uh, black's king is not feeling too great so rook takes d4 makes sense and now i believe there's a series of seven consecutive checks here by karpov to essentially seal the game and the whole game he's played extremely forcefully and not scared to sacrifice and um he continues a forceful play here so just checking the black king around waiting to to try to get the best 
position for his pieces before trying to cash in and try to pick up some of these loose pieces and it's all forced it, it seems to me and so knight f6 bishop e8 is not something you see too often and there's quite a variety of lines here but if if white manages to get this this knight you know swing it over here to attack this should be enough to win as black's pieces are all all you know they, they are defending laterally but uh, they're, they're just too far away, it seems. So here, Topalov, king of eight, and uh, it's probably pretty tough to continue resisting here. And in this position, Topalov resigned. So an absolutely fantastic game by the former world champion Anatoly Karpov. And um, he, he really crushed the tournament 11 out of 13 against 13 of the world's best players. So absolutely incredible. And uh, I've got to give a quick shout out here to Natalia Poganina of www.poganina.com. Thanks for the help with everything. And uh, this is Will Stewart from OnlineChessLessons.net. And thanks for listening.